Hey, hi, hi guys. I some, some uh, I got a uh, okay. Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to Connected Community. I have uh, Mary, Mary Joy today to cover. She's expert in MUs, so she's going to cover uh, five important things you should know about MUSOP. Okay, over to you, Joy. Thanks, Santosh. Um, hey everyone, I'll just share my screen. Okay, let me know when you see it. Yeah, we are good. All good. good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm Joy. Thanks for joining. Um, here to present the five key MuleSoft features that you need to know. Actually, I have lots of things to say. It's not only five, but <laughs> I need to, you know, limit the time. But yeah, here are my favorites so far. Um, yeah, when working um, with MuleSoft for, I think, um, more than five years now. So without further ado, let's get it started. All right. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Joy. I'm originally from Philippines, but I'm now based in Auckland, New Zealand. So I've got over 12 years IT experience um, across different sectors. Um, I've been in integration space for, I think, more than six years now. Um, my background, um, I was a developer. And um, those are my community contributions. Um, I've been part of the MuleSoft community, I think, back in um, 2019 and became part of the uh, MuleSoft cohort back in 2021. So from there, um, I've been active in the MuleSoft community. I'm one of the um, organizers of Wellington MuleSoft Meetup Group. I also, um, you know, I got invited to different um, events around community. So if you wanted to um, check my previous presentation, so please check out my YouTube channel. So I have upload, uh, uploaded those um, recordings um, with my previous talks and um, yeah, and my LinkedIn um, account as well. So yeah. So yeah, I'm currently working as an advisor solution architect, um, but I'm not limited in the delivery side. I enjoy doing pre-sales as well. I've been involved um, heavily on the commercial side, working um, for customers across ANZ region and potentially expanding that to a wider um, location, um, which is uh, Asia Pacific. Cool. All right. So my first, um, yeah, my first favorite it, um, when working in MuleSoft is the Catalyst Knowledge Hub. So at this stage, I've noticed there are still, um, you know, part of the MuleSoft community who um, don't know or are not aware about the Catalyst Knowledge Hub. But as you know, MuleSoft is a um, you know, it's already a product or framework, and it's important to understand that, you know, it's it's not just about the the product, but we need to, um, you know, follow as well the methodologies. And Catalyst Knowledge Hub is my go-to place in terms of like, you know, guidance in the um, delivery, or you know, it could be like. Um, building a support model, or even the technical sides like building accelerators. So if you are um, a MuleSoft partner, or if you have access um, to an enterprise um, MuleSoft license, then you could definitely access the Catalyst Knowledge Hub. Um, so you just need to use your um, login account when you log into any point platform and um, you'll be able to um, access the knowledge hub. So inside of that, um, there's playbooks um, and it will guide you on how you're going to um, 
help the customers for um, for their digital transformations or anything that um, you wanted to implement um, yeah around Minsoft. So yeah, um, those assets or IPs are developed by the Millsoft professional services. Um, some of them they still do support. Um, it's not, you know, it's not like you grab that artifact and implement, but you could also do customization um, or anything. Really? Yeah. Uh, could you please try to uh, put your screen bigger? Maybe you can click a slide share or do another thing that because people would like to read like bigger. We can try like try a different thing. Oh, okay. Let me just swap the I'm gonna share the whole screen. And then Santos will let you know when you need to write up for question. Okay. Yep, sorry about that. Okay, let me try again. Is it better now? It's still the same. Mm, okay. Oh, probably um, you or Santos could share if that's okay. Oh, Santos, do you have the deck? Thanks. Yes, I have. Okay. Quick. Okay, thank you. So you can stop sharing and then Santos try. Yeah, you can carry on enjoy a while I'm sharing, okay? You can keep talking. Well, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually sharing the um, slideshow mode, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, looks fine. Okay, so you can go to the slides that she was talking about. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Continue. Bye. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> okay, going back. Um, all right, it's visible now, yay. Um, cool, so for my top two, um, it's about automation, which we have the Anypoint platform APIs. So I've categorized each um, key feature based on you know if it's development or automation, if it's architecture or delivery or pre-sale, et cetera. So this one is for the development on automation. So. We have the um, underlying APIs in the Anypoint platform, and there's an exchange page around that, and you could explore that, um, you know, publicly. It's available, and it's the same thing as you see those connectors um, on your exchange. So it it has the um, API documentation summary. You could see those endpoints, and what I love about this is you could um, use this. Um, APIs to integrate on your CI CD pipeline. So there are tasks that you, um, you could automate that you normally do via Anypoint platform um, UI. So, say if you want to set up the API manager instance or if you want to um, create um, automated policies via CI CD pipeline or if you want to enable your monitoring via CI CD pipeline so you won't miss it, or you know, set up the visualizer. So all of those things um, you could do via Anypoint platform APIs. And um, this is also very helpful when you have KPI requirements. So there's a metrics accelerator that you could download um, publicly and that accelerator um, is actually using the Anypoint platform APIs. So what I meant by that is, for example, um, you wanted to know um, how many reusable APIs that you've used um, so that you could uh, measure the success of your implementation, which is based on the Catalyst methodology. So yeah, there you have it. Um, 
there's a link there um, where you can access the endpoint platform APIs. Cool. So a third um, feature, key feature is around the development, which is the API kit router. And I feel that this is one of the selling points of MuleSoft. Um, I work with other integration tools, but the API kit router is extremely helpful. Um, in terms of like when you're dealing um, a REST um, API, so say, for example, you write the API specifications in Design Center, say RAML specification, then you will define the data types, um, all of those validations, minimum, maximum length. And then after that, you publish to the Anypoint Exchange. And once you publish it, you download the um, API specifications from your Anypoint Studio, and it will generate an API kit router. So along with that, it has a console, um, which the which is basically what you can see in the API console of your um, Anypoint Design Center. So with the API Kit Router, it's not just about documentation, but it is a functional documentation where it you know you design an API, uh, fault tolerant API because it validates upfront you know those. Um, validations that you've defined on your RAML specification. So yeah, feel free to try it. Um, you can try it using your Anypoint trial account and um, yeah, and see. But um, yeah, I've included as well the limitation. It doesn't validate the um, authentication because API gateway policies, um, it has you know a different um, approach of enforcing the authentication. So the API manager, handles that part. But um, there are, you know, fragments that you could import to your uh, RAML specification as part of your, um, yeah, API kit router, but it just doesn't enforce it. Cool. So do we have any questions so far? Yes. So is there any intent of feature scope to develop similar to have a router in API, async API? Um, there is an async API. Um, it's supported for the async API. Um, so far, I haven't tried it. And I'm not sure if it's functionally um, like enforcing those validation. Yeah. I'm not sure. I could get back to you and check. Sure. Or if there's, you know, anyone from this session that tried that so far for the async API. There's another question uh, on a similar line, but that's for GraphQL. Um, I'm not sure about GraphQL. Um, I haven't tried as well the GraphQL and um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Continue. Well, I'll take those as action items and sure. I'll get back to you. Cool. Um, the fourth uh, key feature is around security and governance, which is um, the API manager. Um, the good thing about MuleSoft is um, it's integration platform as a service. So you've got basically um, everything you need in one platform. Um, normally, they have separate ESB and separate API manager, like Kong API Gateway. But with the MuleSoft, we've got the universal API management that comes with the, um, the Anypoint governance and the Flex Gateway. So with the API manager, um, I like the out-of-the-box policies. Um, the gateway is embedded in the Mule runtime. So if we could move on to the next slide, um, this is where you enforce um, the security, but um, it's not just about security. There are different categories. Um, there's a quality of service, um, troubleshooting, transformation, and compliance. So each category, there are out of the box um, policies, which you can see in the table. And, uh, yeah, those are the usage for each category. So normally, if you're aware of this um, 
out of the box policies. The question now is um, when you're going to use this. So again, going back to the catalyst uh, methodology that you can find in the Knowledge Hub, um, there would be guidance there on how you're going to build a security classifications that you would um, produce to your customer. So say um, you've got you know experience API that is exposed you know or um, yeah exposed publicly or external facing APIs. So with that you need to um, you know add more security controls, right? So that is the security classifications that I'm talking about. So it would depend you know which layer in the API led uh, and what um, recommended policies that you're gonna apply. So it would be good for you to check out the Catalyst methodology um, because it will guide you um, when around you have to consider using this um, you know, API policies. And it works hand in hand as well with the um, business requirements. Cool. And on to the last. Um, key feature, which is around the development, um, of course, data weave. So integration, um, the heart of integration is messaging. Um, and messaging, this is where we do transformations, right? Um, for those um, that are not familiar with integration, so say, for example, your source system um, produced a different format of message, say JSON, and then you have to transform it to the target system that only accepts the XML file. So that's the role of MuleSoft, um, which acts as an integration layer. So we transform the message from JSON to XML, and that's through DataWeave. So DataWeave is the um, MuleSoft's uh, data transformation tool, and it's available um, for you to try via DataWeave Playground which I have the link there. And they've done a really good job here because they've added the tutorials as well and the documentations because there are a bunch of functions that you could use. It's so powerful um, that you know even the complex transformations um, it could do. Um, for example, you know time zone con conversion or um, you, you do um, an object, transformation to an array. So those sort of stuff. And if you really want to try it without installing the Anypoint Studio, that's where you go to the DataWave Playground. And the DataWave Playground, so that's how it looks like on the right side. The left side is how you do that via Any Anypoint Studio. And it's why it's DataWave, because it's weaving the transformation. So you've got the input on the left side, and then you've got the output on the right side, output mapping, and then you just, you just um, map it uh, based on you know, the, re the requirements or the contract. And then it will generate automatically that um, code, lines of code um, that you'll see on the left side. And you could adjust it you know, based on, on your needs. So, are, there is one question. I believe that's on policy. We are almost closing. So uh, is there any way to extend existing uh, out-of-box policy and you, you will be able to customize that? There is a custom um, policy that you could um, create out of those out-of-the-box policies. But yeah, you, you're going to create a custom one. You can't change the out-of-the-box. So you need to define a uh, custom. Perfect. OK, so we are almost uh, on time. Uh, we, I, I think uh, there's nothing further question on the, uh, uh, in a QA. and a OK. Uh, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks, thank you. everyone. Feel free yeah. to reach out um, if you have any questions. And again, um, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks, Antosh. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.